Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Robinson here again. We are reviewing for the grade six New York State mathematics exam. This is our show number one for 2022. We will be taking examples from the 2021 sixth grade exam. If you need help with your homework, there's Dollar Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're very helpful people, and they're also very nice. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision, only in Peak Skill on Channel 15. And don't forget, we also have YouTube study videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson, PKMS, Peak Skill Middle School. Subscribe to our channel. Help us get to our next 1,000 subscribers. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. You can even write us a comment because I do write back. Check out our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 22, to see what we did this year for the state test. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. All right, let's get into it. The diagram below shows the dimensions of a rectangular house with a rectangular backyard. So there's the house, 40 feet, 30 feet, backyard, 90, uh, 80 feet, 50 feet. So they want to know what is the total area in square feet of the house and backyard. All right. So first thing we notice, and let's do a little text coding here. We have a rectangular. Excuse me, I pressed the wrong one. We have a rectangular house. So we're looking for the total. Let me circle that because that means we have to add. And they said area. So I'll underline that. Area, which means we have to do some multiplication with, for, with the area formula of a rectangular uh, uh, figure. So let's look at the house. The area formula for a rectangle is area equals length times width. So that's the area formula. So I got area equals length times width, and this will be the house. So my dimensions are 40 feet, and I'm going to multiply that by 30 feet. So let me tell you a little trick about <clears throat> excuse me, multiplication. Here's a nice trick you might like. Multiply when numbers end in zero, just the first numbers, four times three, which will give me the 12. And add on the, the number of zeros, one, two zeros. So I'm going to put two zeros at the end of that. That'll give me 1,200 square feet. But I'm not finished yet. I got to deal with the backyard. The backyard area is length times width. And I have 80 feet, which has got to be multiplied by 50 feet. And as I did that trick before, I'm going to multiply the first numbers because they both end in zero. Eight times five is 40. And I'm going to put two zeros at the end of that 40. And that'll save me a little time. So I got 4,000 square feet for the backyard. Now remember, they said they want the total area. Total means we got to add up the house area plus the area of the backyard. So let me get my numbers. Area of the house we said was 1,200 square feet plus the area of the yard, backyard, which was 4,000 square feet. So let's add it up. I'll line it up, 1,200, 4,000. And all I gotta do is just a simple addition. Zero plus zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, two plus zero is two, put my little comma there. One plus four is five. So my answer is 5,000 square feet. That is the total area, which is choice D. So I hope you did that correctly, like I did. Nice 
uh, things, you know, unfortunately we can't use a calculator. So hopefully they'll be easy on the state tests with the numbers. But remember that trick I did. That's very helpful. All right, here's our next question. The area, I'm sorry, a rectangle is graphed on a coordinate plane. The coordinates of for two of the vertices of the rectangle are negative 5, 8, and negative 5, negative 6. What is the distance between the two vertices? So we got another rectangle we're dealing with, and it's on a coordinate plane. If you remember the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane, it looks like this. You have an X and Y axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a better drawing than that. So I'm going to pull this out and take a look at those two points. They both are on the x-axis at negative 5. So there is negative 5. And now I got to go up to 8, which is my first point. So that's negative 5, 8. And then let me get my second point. It's at negative 5 and down to negative 6. So there it is, negative 5, negative 6. That's my second point. All right, so we're interested in the distance of this vertical line. So it starts up from here and goes all the way down to here. So all I got to do is just count the distance because distance is always positive. So don't let the negative numbers bother you. So distance is always positive and that'll go with you a long way through your math career. So I'm just going to go down from 8 to zero, that's the origin, that's eight units. Plus, I still gotta go further down a little bit more to get down to the negative six, which is just six units. So from zero to negative six is just six units. So all I gotta do now is just add up my units from eight to zero and from zero to negative six, that's a total of 14 units that I went down from here all the way down to here. So that is the distance from negative five, uh, eight coordinate to negative five, negative six coordinate. So that's going to be our answer, negative, I'm sorry, 14 units, which is choice D. So I hope you like that question. That was pretty good. Talking about rectangle again. So if you're not sure what we did, rewatch the video, bring in your questions or write me an email and uh, or write me a comment, and I'll be glad to answer your question. So here's another question. Which expression is equivalent to 5 parenthesis 4x plus 3 minus 2x? This looks something like I would see in 7th grade, so I'm surprised to see it here in 6th grade. Maybe it was a field test question, but no problem. I'm going to teach you how to handle it. When you see a number next to parenthesis, that means you got to multiply. So that's what you should keep in mind. So we call it distribution. Why? Because you're going to be distributing this 5, which is being multiplied first by the 4x, and then we're going to distribute the 5 to multiply by the plus 3. Now don't forget, you still have a negative 2x at the end hanging there. So I'm going to put that down here so we don't forget it. All right, now in multiplying uh, these uh, terms, I have five times four, which I'm gonna multiply. Five times four is 20. And don't forget, you have a little X there. So let's put that little X down there. So let's bring that little X next to the 20. So that's 20 X. And now we gotta multiply these numbers or constants, five times the three, that equals 15 or plus 15. And don't forget, we still have a minus 2x. So let's get our like terms together. I have 20x plus 15 and I'm minus 2x. So I'm going to put the 20x here with the minus 2x together. And I have still a plus 15. And now 20x minus 2x's. And I tell my students, I said, just treat an X like it's an egg. 20 eggs minus two eggs will give you 18 eggs. And you have plus 15, so don't forget that. So that is our final answer when we simplify it. Now, don't try to add these two numbers together 
because when you get to a higher level math, a lot of kids like to do that. We just leave it as what's called a polynomial or a binomial to be more specific term. So 18x plus 15, which is choice letter A. That was a good question. And again, I think we would see that more so in seventh grade, but hey, you never know. So I hope you enjoyed that question. We got one more for you. And a machine fills boxes at a constant rate. And that's a seventh grade word we like to use. It means fraction. At the end of 35 minutes, it has filled five boxes. Which table represents the relationship between the number of minutes the machine fills the boxes and the number of boxes it has filled? So they're telling you in the question they're interested in the minutes per box for each box that it's filling. Because it said rate. Rate means it's a fraction. So the fraction they're telling you what it, they want minutes, which was 35 minutes in this case, over the number of boxes it filled, which was five. If we simplify that by dividing both top and bottom number by five, we'll get seven over one. In other words, seven minutes will fill one box. So now I'm just looking at a table to see where that is true, because we got a lot of tables here. So the first thing I'm looking for is time to be seven minutes in one box. So I'm looking, this one looks pretty good. Seven minutes, one box. So that looks pretty good. Let me just check B. Well, that's five minutes in one box. So I know that's not good. So I'm going to get rid of B. And one minute and seven boxes filled? Well, that sounds kind of like it, but it said seven minutes. So that's why this is wrong. It should have been seven, not one, for seven boxes. So that's incorrect. And let me look at this one. One minute for five boxes filled. No, that's not it. One minute, uh, seven minutes for one box. So that's not it. So seven minutes in one box looks pretty good. That looks like would be the correct choice. But let me just check that. So seven minutes, one box would fill. Well, 14 minutes. Let's see, let me put that 14 minutes on the top over two boxes. If I divide that by set by two, I should get the seven minutes over one, which I do. So that checks out. And let me just take a look at 21 minutes over three boxes. So 21 over three, if I divide that by seven minutes over one box, I get three over one. Wait, wait, did I divide that right? Um, no, let me divide that by three, I'm sorry. So let's erase that Dr. Rob. Get my eraser out. And I'm going to divide that by three because that didn't go in right. My bad. Sorry. So I'm going to divide this by seven over one. <laughs> Dr. Ralph, stop doing that. Okay, let me redo that. All right. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to divide by three. So sorry. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by three. And I'm going to get seven over one one again. So that checks out. So let me take the last one, 28 minutes over four boxes. If I divide that by four and simplify it, I get, again, seven over one each time. So Dr. Rob, why did you take so much time to get that seven over one each time? Because when you come to seventh grade, that has a name. That is called the COP, constant of proportionality. You guys in sixth grade call it the unit rate, but in seventh grade, we call it the constant of proportionality. 
So that's why I wanted to take a little bit more time with this question, because I know you're going to need it for when you guys come to seventh grade to visit us. So A was the correct answer to pick. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. If you're not sure, rewatch the video. I'm sorry for my, my uh, reducing, but uh, rewatch it again. And if you have, do have questions, there's Dollar Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday to Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. They're nice people, and they will help you out. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cablevision on Channel 15, only in peak skill, though. Don't forget, I have other YouTube videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson, PKMS. Subscribe to our channel. Let us know how we're doing. Give us a thumbs up and write me a comment because I do write back. Check out our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 22. See what we did this year to prepare for the state test. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. If you want a worksheet on, on this topic that we just did, write me at DRobinson at PeakSkillSchools.org and I'll send you something. So good luck on the exam. Buenos suerte and a la examinez. And I hope you do well. I know you'll do well if you keep watching our videos and check out some of those seventh grade videos. That way you can see what you're in store for when you get there. So this is Dr. Rob signing off from his review of the grade six New York State test. So I hope you do well. Remember, subscribe to our channel. See you soon. Bye-bye.